Hello, my students. Welcome back into my channel. Now I'm going to explain how we're solving a past paper, IBDP past paper, mathematics analysis and approaches, higher level paper three, on 31 October 2023. Number one, these questions ask you to explore some properties of the family of curves. This curve, this functions curve, Consider the family curves y equals x cubed plus ax squared plus b. First, consider the case where, where a equals 3. Question a, by systematically varying the value of b or otherwise, find two values, two values of b, such that the curve y x cubed plus 3 x squared plus b has exactly two x axis intercepts. Right. A equals 3. And I will uh, I will find the derivative of the functions y equals x cubed plus plus 3x squared plus b. Okay. So the derivative will be 3x squared plus 6x yeah, equals zero. Because we're gonna find x and through factorization, it'll be x plus two equals zero. So x equals zero or three x plus two equals zero. So it is x equals minus two third. Now, when uh, when x equals zero, when x equals zero, subject to this function, it becomes uh, x cubed plus three x squared plus b equals zero. A function has two intercept point on x-axis if uh, if y equals zero. So it's going to be b equals zero because zero plus zero. So b equals zero. Now, when x equals two third, so it becomes minus two third cube plus three times minus two third squared plus b equals zero. And if you calculate, you're going to find that b equals wait this one to third b equals or oh, negative four equals negative four okay uh I would like to sketch uh firstly this one if we sketch If you sketch the derivatives, look that this graph has two coordinate points intercept with x-axis. Okay, on negative two and on zero. So, yeah, this is the turning point or the minimum, the local minimum. So, how if 
How about if uh, if y if p equals negative four? If if b equals negative four, it means the function will be y equals x cubed plus three x squared minus four. And if you sketch, uh, if you sketch, it will be like this. Like this, yeah. Okay, this is one, negative two, and negative four. So the local minimum is negative four. So the intercept point on this point and on this point on negative two comma zero and one comma zero. Okay. Question. Yeah, the values of B is zero and the values of B is zero and negative four. Yeah. Two X in a set. If, if B equals negative four, the intercept point is negative two comma zero and one comma zero. So if b equals zero, the function will be x cubed plus three x squared plus zero. So if you sketch, it becomes like this. Okay, the local minimum on here. Wait. Yeah, like this. Yeah. This is the local maximum here and the local minimum here. The local maximum is negative two comma four, and the local minimum is zero and zero. So there are two coordinate points of intersect. So if I will create a number line like this, negative four and zero, so at the conclusions is. The function will have two coordinate points in a set on x axis if b equals negative four and b equals zero. Write down the set values of b such that the curve has exactly one x axis in a set. Okay. So this is number line. Uh, just now, the functions has two coordinate points on x axis, inside on x axis, when b equals negative four and b equals zero. Now, if B uh, is B less than negative four and B greater than zero, the function is B less than negative four uh, or B greater than zero. The graph 
has one inner set point. on x axis now uh, for example if the function is x cubed plus 3x squared negative 4 it means negative 5 okay. p equals negative 5 so the graph will be like this. If I create like this. Y X axis. Like this, the graph. Okay. Uh, this one, this is 1.1, one, 1.1 1. 1 on x-axis, and the local minimum is minus 5, and the local minimum is 0, negative 5, local minimum is negative 2, and negative one. Yeah. Let's look that it has one inner set point on x axis. That if b equals negative five less than negative four. So how about if y equals x cubed plus three x squared plus one. Okay, plus one. Greater than, uh, greater than zero. So, the graph like this. Yeah, like this. This is the local maximum, and this is the local minimum one y-axis, x-axis, negative 2, so the local minimum uh, on negative 2. So look that it has one intercept point on x-axis, this one. Okay. Next part, 2, 3, uh, 3 intercept point on x-axis. Part two, on number line, negative four, zero. Uh, if B equals negative four and B equals, equals zero, Y has only, uh, Y has two, in a point on x axis. If b less than negative 4, greater than 0, the functions or the graph has only one in a point on x axis. Now, if b between negative 4 and 0, if b Sorry. If B uh, greater than negative four, less than zero, the graph uh, the graph has three in a set point. on x-axis. For example, uh, the graph y equals x cubed plus 3x squared 
minus 3. The sketch like this. The graph. Yeah. Minus two. This is minus three. Okay. And look that the graph has three coordinate point intercept on X axis. Which one? This one, this one, and this one. Okay. As well, if y equals x cubed, uh, if uh, x cubed plus 3x squared minus 1, minus 1, position here. So it will be like this. If you sketch, Yeah. The local maximum on negative two and the local maximum on y equals negative one. Look, there are three coordinate points in a sec in a sec on x axis. So okay, part two already. Now this one, uh, this one already part two. Now this one, a equals negative three. Uh, yeah, the function will be like this. And we have to find if the functions have two, if the function has two x axis in a set, one x axis and three x axis. Okay. Uh, this is part. Let's see. Okay. True number line. Uh, zero and. Wait. I'm going to write down these functions x cubed plus 3x, sorry, minus, because a equals negative 3. Okay, what I said. Once more, okay, minus 3 squared plus b. So it has well, it is a point if x cubed to x squared plus b equals zero. Uh, the derivative is three x squared minus six x equals zero. So x times 3x minus 6 equals 0. So x equals 0. And x equals 2. Okay. So when... Wait. When x equals zero, the equation will be 
0 cube plus 0 3 times 0 plus b equals 0. So b equals 0. When x equals 2, uh, it will be 2 cube minus 3 times 2 squared plus b equals 0. So b equals 4. So b equals 0 and b equals 4. So to the number line, 0 and 4. Uh, the graph or the function, the graph or y has two intercept point on x axis if b equals 0 or b equals 4. The second, the graph or y has to S1, so the S1 is a point S1 in a set point on x axis if uh, if if b less than zero or B greater than four. Now you can check through uh through, through graph. Uh, you may sketch the graph. Uh, the graph or y has s three or has three in as a point. On, on x axis if if b greater than zero less than four on number line uh, like this this is zero this is four the area uh, this is the area and on number line zero four this area between zero and four for the following part of this question consider the curve this curve y equals x cubed plus ax squared plus b. Consider the case where the curve has three x axis in a set. State whether its point of zero gradient is located above or below the x axis. Right. The zero gradient. Zero gradi gradient located on uh, on the x axis. Why? I'm going to show you through this uh, this graph. This graph of 
graph of y equals x cubed plus 3x squared minus 3. If you look at this graph, okay, this graph will be like this. Look that this graph has has three coordinate points on x axis as the intercept point between this graph and x axis. Which one the graph? This one. This one as well. This one as well. So there are three. For example, this this coordinate point is. 0, 0 0.879 and 0, 0 0.879 comma 0. If you find the gradient, the gradient is 0 over 0 0.879, it is 0. So, a uh, 0 gradient located, uh, located on the x-axis, sorry, not off, but on the x-axis, not above or below the x-axis. Next, E. Show that the curve has point of zero gradient at P zero comma B and F Q. Okay, zero gradient. I'm going to start uh, from the function y equals x Q plus a x squared plus b. So the y, the x, or the first derivative is 3x squared plus 2a. Yeah, 2ax, sorry. For 0, the gradient should be equal 0. And if you factorize 3x, plus 2a equals 0. So x equals 0, or 3x plus 2a equals 0. So x equals 0, and x equals minus 2 third a. When x equals 0, Substitute into this function. Uh, y equals zero plus zero plus b. So y equals b. So uh, b a coordinate point p is zero comma b zero. B. And this is a coordinate. This is a coordinate point of zero gradient. Now, if, yeah, when x equals minus 2 third a. y equals minus 2 third a cube plus a times minus 2 third a squared plus b. And it becomes minus 8 over 27 a cube plus 12 
over 27 a cube plus b and if is 4 over 27 a cube plus b so the coordinate point q I'm going to write in to continue here the coordinate point q is minus two third a comma four over twenty seven a cube plus b okay, look this is x then this is y x comma y <clears throat> this one x comma y so this is a point of zero gradient. Yeah. If you uh, substitute number here, you can find, you can prove that this is a zero gradient. For example, for example, at coordinate I could put it at uh, zero and negative four. <clears throat> yeah, zero and negative four on y equals x cubed plus three x squared minus four because this is b negative four. So Q will be negative two third times three because this is a comma four over twenty seven times three uh, three Q minus four plus negative four and Q will be negative two comma. 4 minus 4, 0. Then this is the zero gradients. Because if you find n, 0 over negative 2 equals 0. OK, e already. And oh, the termin, oh no, oh, this is already. OK, now f. Consider the points p and q for a greater than zero, B greater than zero, find an expression for, I'm going to find the second derivative and then determine local maximum and local minimum. F. y equals x cubed plus ax squared plus b. The first derivative will be 3x squared plus 2ax. So t equals 0. And if you factorize, 3x plus 2a equals 0. So x equals 0 or 3x plus 2a equals 0. So x equals minus 2 third a. Now when When x equals 0, uh, substitute into the second the second derivative. Uh, substitute with the second derivative with that one. Oh, 
I mean, yeah. Yeah, this uh, zero and negative. Now, second derivative first, because uh, I would like to substitute into the second derivative. Second derivative is 6x plus 2a. Now we are going, to, this is the second derivative. Now we, we are going to substitute into the second derivative, x equals 0 is like this. Six times zero plus two a. It is two a. A is a positive. So <clears throat> a is a positive number. If a is a positive number, so it means a greater than zero. So p is a local minimum. P is a local minimum point. So P is a coordinate point. Now when X equals minus two third A, the second derivative, equals six times minus two third a plus two a it is minus four a plus two a equals minus two a so it means a is a negative negative number okay a negative number, I mean. So A less than zero. If A less than zero, P is a local maximum. It's a local maximum point. Then next. Next question is determine whether each point is located above or below, <clears throat> above or below the x axis. Next part two. This is part one. So P and Q, P and Q are above, are above the x-axis, are above on the x-axis, I mean. Why? Because, because A greater than zero and B greater than zero as well. For example, uh, this graph, if I sketch this graph, Y equals X cube plus three X squared plus two. Uh, either are negative, A and uh, either are positive, A and B. So if you sketch this graph, it will be like this. Y, X, K. This is the local minimum, two, and this is the local maximum. Uh, 
the local maximum this one and this is the local minimum either position above the x axis okay yeah and afterwards if i have to Consider the points P and Q for, for A less than zero and B greater than zero. Okay, just now A greater than zero, B greater than zero. Now A less than zero, B greater than zero. State whether P is a local maximum or local minimum and whether it is above or below the x-axis. G, <clears throat> A less than zero, B greater than zero. Uh, part one, P is a local maximum. Why? Because, yeah, because it position because it positions above the ax axis. Above the x axis. Yeah. Now, if for example, if if b equals one, if b equals one, so p will be zero comma one, and this coordinate point positions above the x axis. Okay. Now. Yeah, if a yeah if a equals minus two mm. if a equals minus two you can determine q yeah q will be for third comma negative five over ten is seven yeah. and if you sketch you could see that you can see that this corner point zero comma one positions above the x axis. Okay. So let me see part two. State the conditions on A and B that determine when Q is below the x-axis. Part two, Q is a local minimum. Because its position because its position uh, under the x axis. Uh, for example, yeah, for example, this one if. If a less than negative, uh, if a equals negative two, it means less than zero. Uh, this coordinate point positions under the x-axis. Okay. So, but I will uh, write like this: if q minus two 
dot a comma four over twenty seven a cube plus b. Okay. This is x. This is y. So y equals four over twenty seven a cube plus b, and it should be less than zero. So the locations uh, of this coordinate point or this coordinate point, of course, under or below the x-axis. Now, H. Prove that if, oh yeah, I already write down that one. If 4a cube b plus 27b squared less than zero, then the curve uh, has exactly three x axis in a set. Okay. But that point uh, that could not point on uh, under the x axis. Like this could not point. H or a cube plus twenty seven B squared less than zero. So I'm going to factorize twenty seven B times four over twenty seven and twenty seven A cube plus b less than zero. So becomes 27b less than zero or four over 27 a cube plus b less than zero. So it is b less than zero. So we can state that when when B and four over twenty seven A cube plus B okay they have opposite sign yeah when B and this one for over 27a cubed plus b have positive sign if one of them negative while another one positive so p and q p and q are located are located on a on either on either side on either side of x axis so uh, the curve the curve has exactly has exactly three intercept points, intercept coordinate point supposed to be right on x axis. I'm gonna add on x axis. Yeah. So we can state that we can state that if uh, there's no D and this one, yeah, if 4 over 27 a cube plus B less than 0, like my previous explanation, this one, the graph, uh, 
uh, the graph has yeah, the graph has three. The graph ha has three exactly. Uh, no need Excel has three coordinate point. Has three coordinate the coordinate points as the coordinate intercept. points on x-axis it's one number two this question begins by asking you to examine families of course that intersect every member of another family of course at right angles you will then examine a family of curves that intersect every member of another family of curves at an acute angle alpha. Consider a family of straight lines L with equation Y equals MX, where M is a parameter. Its member of L intersect every member of a family of curves C at right angles. In parts 1, 2, and 3, you are not required to consider the case where x equals 0. Part 1, write down an expression for the gradient of L in terms of x and y. Okay. So gradient, uh, gradient of L is y over x. Why? Because if the coordinate point, if the coordinate point x comma y, so the gradient will be like this y over x. This is part one. Next part two. Hence, show that the gradient of c is given by dy dx equals minus x over y. Look that <clears throat> each member of L intersect every member of family of group C at right angles. So it means M it means M C gradient of C times gradients of L equals minus one. Why? Because uh, the angle is right angles. It means uh, the position between strike line L and strike line C is perpendicular one another. So MC times Y over X equals minus one. MC equals minus one times x over y or minus x over y. This is gradient c. So dy dx equals minus x over y. Next part three. By solving the differential equation dy dx equals minus x over y, show that the family of curve C has equations x squared plus y squared minus k, where k is a parameter. Okay. Part three. Uh, I'm going to using another color. So dy dx equals minus x over y or you can arrange this equation being y 
dy equals minus x dx. After that, being the integral y dy minus x dx. Or the integral is half y squared minus half x squared plus c multiply by 2 is going to be y squared equals minus x squared plus 2c. I'm going to move here. So it becomes x squared plus y squared equals 2c. If 2c equals k, because parameter, so this equation being x squared plus y squared equals k. So what? A family, of course, has equation this one, where a is a positive real parameter. A second family, of course, has equation this one. So this is the first equation, and this one the second equation. <clears throat> Where, where B is a positive real parameter. So A positive, B positive. That question, consider the case where A equals 2 and B equals 1. If A equals 2, it means this equation being like this. A16 minus AX. And this equation be like this because B equals 1. On the same set axis, sketch the curves. Okay, we are going to sketch this curve and this curve. On your sketch, clearly label its curve and any x in the set point. So we are going to determine how many in the set point. This is B. Okay, if y squared equals 4a squared minus 4ax and a equals a equals 2, it means y squared uh, becomes 16 minus 8x. If x equals 0, uh, it's going to be y squared minus 16. So the intercept point on y-axis is, oh, wait, this is square root 16 plus minus 4. So the intercept, intercept point is uh, 0, comma, negative 4 and 0, 4, this one. Now, if, uh, if y equals 0, if y equals 0, it means 4a squared minus 4ax equals 0. So, a equals 2, so it's going to be 8x, 8x x equals 16, x equals 2. Yeah. If this is equals 0, so x equals 16. So the coordinate point, 2 comma 0. Now let's we sketch. OK, like this. Y and this is four negative four. This is negative four mm. and two comma zero. Two comma zero. If this is four around here, so two comma zero is the vertex. Okay. 
XOR, the turning point. Okay. And for the second, the second equations is Y, Y equals four, four B squared plus four B X. B equals one, so it becomes uh, four plus four X. Now, if X equals zero, Y equals uh, equals four y squared. Sorry, y squared. This is squared. So y equals square root four plus minus two, and the coordinate point zero comma two and zero comma minus two. <clears throat> Next, if y equals zero, so it means Four plus four x equals zero. So four x equals four minus four, and x equals minus one. So the coordinate point zero, uh, sorry minus one, comma zero. So minus one comma zero from here. Is minus one. Uh, the turning point. This is two. This is minus two. And the graph will be like this. Okay, like that. Next. Uh, the inner point on x axis, there are there are two inner point on x axis. <clears throat> uh, two comma zero and this is minus one and minus one comma zero. Okay, this so one already uh, B already next uh, next. You are not required to find the corners of any points of intersect intersections of the two curves. Okay. By solving y squared equals 4a squared minus 4x and y squared equals 4b squared plus 4bx simultaneously show that this curve intersect at points this one and this one. Okay. Next. See? Uh, yeah, y squared equals y squared. Yeah. Okay, so you, this is y squared, and this one y squared. If y squared equals y squared, it means four a squared minus four a x equals four b squared plus four b x. For a squared minus four a x equals four b squared plus four b x and divided by four, it's going to be a squared minus a x equals b squared plus b x a squared a x minus b squared minus b 
x equals zero. <clears throat> so a squared minus b squared equals ax plus bx. We can uh, we can state like this a plus b <clears throat> times a minus b equals a plus b x divided. So a minus b equals x or x equals a minus b after that substitute. Yeah, substitutes. Uh, this one <clears throat> substitutes x into y uh, y squared equals four a squared minus four a x. So it becomes it becomes y squared equals 4a squared minus 4a times a minus b. And it is 4a squared <laughs> minus 4a squared plus 4ab. <clears throat> Zero. So y squared equals 4 a, B, or Y equals square root for A, B, or Y equals 2 square root A, B. Right. And yeah, this plus minus. So for that point M, <clears throat> point M will be point. point M will be this is X and this is Y. So A minus B comma two square root A B. And coordinate point N is A minus B <clears throat> and minus 2 square root AB. Yeah. So that is coordinate point M and coordinate point N. This one and this one. At point M, show that the curve y squared plus uh, y squared equals 4a squared minus 4ax and y squared equals 4b squared plus 4bx intersect at right angle. So it means we're going to find the gradient. Okay. D, I'm going to write in here D. Now y squared equals 4a squared minus 4ax. Now to implicit differentiations, uh, we're going to find the differential of this equation 2y dy equals minus, this has become zero, minus four, sorry, that one minus. Minus four A, dx, so dy dx, it cos minus 4a over 2y. 
and substitute this y equals to ab this one yeah, on corner point m so it becomes dy dx equals minus 4a over uh, 2 times 2 square root ab and after that divide it becomes becomes a over uh, minus a over uh, square root a b if you multiply by square root a over square root a it's going to be minus square root a over square root b or minus square root a over b <clears throat> next substitute this one on n this one So it's going to be dy dx equals minus 4a over uh, minus 2 times 2 square root ab. Being positive, a over square root ab. With the same process with this one, if you multiply by square root a over square root a, it will be square root A over B. And look, if minus square root A over square root B times square root A times square root B, it is negative one. Yeah. So if two straight lines perpendicular one another, the multiplication result should be negative one. So it means <clears throat> strike line through M and strike line through N, a strike line through M and a strike line through N is perpendicular one another. Consider two families of curves F and G. The gradient of f is denoted by f x y. The gradient of g is denoted by g x y. Its member of f intersect every member of g, okay, at an acute angle. Okay. It can be shown that this is the function. In part E, consider the specific case where f x y equals minus x over y, and alpha is pi over four. Show that g x y equals y minus x over y plus x. E, <clears throat> G, X, G, X, Y is F, X, Y plus tangent alpha over minus a uh, one minus F, X, Y tangent alpha. And according to this information that fxy equals minus x over y, alpha equals pi over 4. So fx with f x over y is minus x over y. So this, this one is minus x over y. Uh, plus tangent pi over 4 over 1 minus uh, minus x over y times tangent 
pi over four. And it is minus x over y plus one. This is one plus x over y times one. So I will simplify becomes minus x over y plus y over y over y over y plus x over y. It comes <clears throat> x plus y over y, uh, y plus x over y. It's going to be y minus x over y times y over y plus x. This becomes y minus x over y plus x. This. The next <clears throat> part two. By solving the homogeneous differential equation, dy dx, okay, y minus x over y plus x, find a general equation, or find a, the general equation that represents this family of curves G. Give your answer in the form of H xy equals d, where d is a parameter or the constant. So part two, uh, homogeneous differential equations, it means we have to start from uh, the substitution that v equals y over x. If v equals y over x, it means y equals v times x and the differential <clears throat> by uh, implicit differentiation is will be dy dx equals v plus x dv dx and after that, dy, yeah, dy dx equals, <clears throat> and dy dx equals, it's now y minus x over y plus x. This is from the previous solution. So after that, uh, according to this equation that uh, v plus x dv dx equals uh, vx y equals vx minus x over vx plus x. Yeah. Wait. Okay, so dy, dy dx is this one because uh, according to this differential equation, <clears throat> and y equals px, y equals px. So after that, I will factorize x p minus one over x p plus one. Okay, so it's going to be v plus x dv dx equals v minus one over p plus one. After that, x dv dx is equivalent 
plus V minus 1 over V plus 1 minus V, this V. So it becomes X dV dx equals V minus 1, V plus 1 minus V times V plus 1 over V plus 1. <coughs> And it becomes x dv over and dv dx equals v minus 1 okay, minus v squared minus v over v plus 1. v minus v equals 0. So x dv dx equals minus v squared plus 1 over v plus 1. <clears throat> or you can arrange this equation becomes v plus 1 over v squared plus 1 dv equals equals minus minus dx over x one after that uh being integral integral p plus one over p squared plus one dv equals minus integral dx over x Now I'm going to find the solutions of this integral first. For this integral, p plus 1 over v squared plus 1 dv. Uh, I'm going to use substitution c equals tangent theta. So dv equals second squared theta d theta and then v squared equals tangent squared theta so v squared plus one equals tangent squared theta plus one and it is second squared theta so it becomes integral uh, p plus one that it uh, it's going to be with uh, better this is p plus uh, p squared plus one the phi plus integral one over p squared plus one dv okay so it's going to be uh wait v d v yeah this is v of integral v over u t v Okay, plus integral dv uh, over p squared plus 1 or uh, dv over u. And then it becomes wait. I'm going to use another substitution. If u equals p squared plus 1 du is to c dv of du equals p dv okay so this integral becomes half 
uh, in, uh, integral half du over u, okay, uh, plus integral uh, integral d phi over u, right? <clears throat> For this integral, it becomes integral learn u plus integral d phi over u. This is integral uh, half learn p squared plus one. That's one. Now this integral I'm going to find here integral uh, integral one over p squared plus one d phi. This is integral one over second squared theta d phi is this mm -hmm. one second squared theta d theta. So it is integral d theta. Okay. If phi equals tangent theta, it means theta equals arc tangent phi. So it becomes arc tangent phi. So plus arc tangent phi. Arc tangent phi plus c. Okay, this the integral. So I would like to write in integral phi plus one over phi squared plus one d phi uh, equals integral dx over x. Uh, it, uh, it becomes of ln phi squared plus one plus arc tangent phi arc tangent uh, arc tangent phi sorry I need to write the modulus arc tangent phi And yeah, uh, tension C equals yeah this one uh, plus C equals this integral is uh, minus ln x plus C, and it becomes half. Learn phi squared plus one, or learn uh, phi is y over x. It becomes y squared over x squared plus one plus arc tangent y over x plus then x equals d. Yeah. The parameter is d. Yeah. This is the result. So in the form of in form of h x y plus d, it means H, uh, the function H is half ln y squared over x squared plus one plus arc tangent y over x plus ln x. 
This is the functions of H. Okay. What else? Oh, F. By considering limit alpha approach to pi half, tangent alpha show that for all finite f x y uh, we are going to find uh, we are going to prove that limit g x y of uh, alpha approach to pi half equals this one minus one over function f Okay, so uh, G, X, Y, wait, this is part, part F, okay, part F, uh, function G is F, x y plus tangent alpha over one minus f x y tangent alpha i will multiply by one over tangent alpha over one over tangent alpha okay and this function becomes f x y over tangent alpha plus one over one over tangent alpha minus f x y now limit so it means limit alpha approach to pi half of g x y it will be f x y over tangent alpha plus one over the over one over tangent alpha minus f x y tangent alpha the uh, the values of tangent pi over pi over two is zero yeah. so tangent alpha it means tangent pi half so it becomes this is zero plus one over zero minus fxy. So it becomes one over uh, minus one over fxy. So we can state that limit. Alpha approach to pi half of G X Y equals one equals negative one over F X Y. Okay, students, thank you for joining with me in this lesson. See you.